हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू यूनिटी फिजिक्स सिस्टम वीडियो ट्यूटोरियल्स सीरीज इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो ट्यूटोरियल्स वी अंडरस्टूड कोलाइडर्स इन यूनिटी कोलाइडर इज एन इनविजिबल शेप यूज टू हैंडल कोल्यूजन्स बिटवीन गेम ऑब्जेक्ट्स देन वी अंडरस्टूड बॉक्स कोलाइडर इन यूनिटी वी नो दैट बॉक्स कोलाइडर इज अ कोलाइडर विच कम्स इन अ बॉक्स शेप बॉक्स कोलाइडर कैन बी यूज टू रैप एनी बॉक्स शेप गेम ऑब्जेक्ट लाइक वॉल डोर ग्राउंड एटसेट्रा राइट इन दिस वीडियो ट्यूटोरियल आई वुड लाइक टू डिस्कस स्फेयर कोलाइडर इन यूनिटी स्फेयर कोलाइडर इज अ कोलाइडर विच कम्स इन अ स्फेरिकल शेप स्फेयर कोलाइडर कैन बी यूज टू रैप एनी स्फेरिकल शेप गेम ऑब्जेक्ट लाइक अ बॉल प्लानट मून सन फ्रूट्स वेजिटेबल्स मार्बल्स एटसेट्रा एटसेट्रा स्फेयर कोलाइडर कम्स इन अ स्फेरिकल शेप it can be used to wrap any spherical shape game object like ball planet moon sun fruits like orange vegetables like tomato marbles etc guys i go to unity i go to game object menu say 3d object say sphere you can see that the sphere game object is created and unity automatically added the sphere collider to it if i stop rendering the mesh you can see that the sphere collider comes in a spherical shape right it comes in a spherical shape which you can use to wrap any spherical shape game object let's understand the properties of sphere collider first we have radius radius indicates radius of a sphere collider guys so if i go here this sphere collider radius is set to 0.5 definitely you can change the radius if it is required let me render the mesh and if i drag the radius label you can see that i am changing the radius of the sphere collider so you can increase or decrease as you wish let me reset it back to 0.5 so using the radius you can change the size of your sphere collider good next we have center center indicates offset of the collider from the center of the game object offset of the collider from the center of the game object of course if required you can definitely offset the collider from the center of the game object so if i drag the x label here you can see that i am offsetting the collider right we can offset the collider up and down you can see we can move the collider forward and backward it's our wish guys so 0 0 0 so now we understood what is the radius property and what's the use of the center property let's understand next we have edit collider tool edit collider tool enables controls for changing the size of the collider it enables the controls or control points for changing the size of the collider you can change the size of the collider using radius also using the edit collider tool guys so if i enable the edit collider tool okay let me stop rendering the mesh and then enable the edit collider tool okay you can see now we have some control points here if i click and hold down the alt key and drag you can see that i am able to change the radius of the sphere collider right this radius value is changing here so if i click and hold down the alt key and drag you can observe that the radius is changing right if you do not hold the alt key and drag it changes in one direction you can see that right you can see that it's changing in one direction guys so that's how you can use the edit collider tool so let me reset this to 0 this to 0 and this to 0 that's the use of edit collider tool guys and let me set the radius to 0.5 okay i disable the edit collider tool good next we have physic material so material indicates the physic material of the game object so here we have a material property which actually indicates the physic material it accept the reference to physic material guys so what is a physic material physic material determines how a game object must behave in the physical world whether it should behave like a rubber whether it should behave like a plastic wood stone metal glass ice etc so physic material indicates how it should behave whether it should behave like a plastic object whether it should behave like an object made with rubber or whether it should behave like an object made with metal etc that's what the physic material indicates guys so let me demonstrate it clearly 
So let me select this sphere and um, enable the mesh renderer. Good. I'm going to create another 3D object cube here. I am going to say this as a ground, G R O U N D ground. I scale it in X axis by 10 and scale it in Z axis by 10 and rotate it around Z axis by minus 20. And I move it down so that we can see the sphere game object, right? So I move it up and move it left and move it more up here. Good. Now we have two types of materials. Okay. One is a normal material which defines the look and feel of the game object. And another material that is physique material which defines how the game object behaves in the physical world. Like for example, let me set the sphere game object here. Here I have some physique materials. Okay. If I drag the metal physique material here, now this sphere is going to behave like it is made of metal. Let me add a rigid body also, add component. I say physics, I add a rigid body. So when we add a rigid body, of course it is going to behave like a physics object, right? It is affected by gravity and force. So if I click on the play button, it just falls down. It is not going to bounce. You can see just it is rotating and falling down, right? Okay, now let's take if I give a rubber physique material here, now this sphere is going to behave like it is made of rubber. So you see a little bounciness here. So when I click on the play button, it falls down and you see a little bounciness. See, it has bounced a little bit. You can observe that. If I click on the play button, you find a little bounciness. See, it's bouncing a little bit. Okay, let me give a bouncy material here. So now this sphere is going to behave like a bouncy object which is going to bounce more uh, if I click on the play button you see now it's going to bounce more right so that's what the physique material indicates guys there is one more material that's normal material I hope you know that if I right click here say create a folder and I say here M A T E R I A L S materials and then I go to say right click create a material so for example i say here m underscore ground and i'm going to set the color here somewhat like this and then i drag this m ground on this ground game object so that defines the look and feel this normal material whereas physique material defines how the game object is going to behave in the physical world guys okay next we are going to understand is trigger property is trigger property converts the collider into a trigger. Is trigger property converts the collider into a trigger. What is the difference between a trigger and a collider we have to understand. Trigger indicates non-solid volume guys. For example, liquid, gas, vacuum, etc. Whereas collider indicates solid volume. Trigger indicates non-solid volume. Collider indicates solid volume. That means two solid objects do not allow to intersect one another. One collider does not allow other collider to pass through. Understanding? Whereas a trigger is a non-solid volume like a liquid gas which allow other game object to pass through. Right? Understanding? So let's see the demonstration and understand. Here I have a ground. Let me reset it uh, rotation in Z to 0. Okay. And then I have a sphere here. I'm going to bring it this side. And so when do we use trigger? We have to understand. Trigger is used to create a volume or a space which senses and triggers events when some game object enters, stays or exit the particular volume or a space. Trigger is used to create volume which senses and triggers events when some other game object enters, stays or exits that particular volume guys. For example, if you want to create a danger zone, a water pool, a security room, etc. You have to convert that collider into a trigger, right? For example, you want to create a danger zone. Okay. When any character enters that danger zone, its health should get reduced. So you should allow the character to enter in that danger zone, right? So what you have to do? You have to convert the collider of the danger zone to a trigger. Like for example, if I take this sphere and rename it to danger zone, D A 
N Z E R danger zone. Okay, and then let me go here, select the M ground and change its color to black. Okay, I create one more material here. Right click, create a material. I say M underscore danger zone, and then I'm going to set its color to red and change the rendering mode to fade and apply this to this object and I am going to reduce its alpha value down so that it should look like a danger zone and then I'm going to move it down here okay and I scale it here so I say here 10 by 10 by 10 so that's the danger zone guys okay let me increase the ground size to 20 by 20 so that is the danger zone what we have created now at present it is a collider you can see it is not a trigger right let me say this is a kinematic object that means it is not affected by any physics okay it's not going to be affected by gravity and all okay so this is a danger zone and it is a collider guys okay let me create one game object here game object 3d object cube and I place it above on top here okay and then I'm going to add a rigid body to it I say physics and say rigid body of course definitely the cube is going to fall down cube also has the collider our danger zone also has the collider so both are collider as I told colliders don't allow objects to pass through so if I click on the play button you see that our cube is not going to enter in that danger zone at all right but I want this object should pass through this it should go inside so I select the danger zone and convert it into a trigger when I convert it into a trigger this object passes through guys so you can see that the cube passes through right and when the cube is inside its health reduces so consider cube as a character it health reduces as long as it stays inside that danger zone so that that that's what you are going to do guys to create a danger zone or something I hope you guys are clearly understanding what is the difference between the trigger and the collider so if I remove this trigger option and play the cube is not going to pass through so this is going to behave like a solid object whereas if I convert the danger zone danger zone into a trigger the other object passes through so it's just a volume what we have created here I hope you guys have clearly understood all the properties of the sphere collider we understood the radius center offset material that is physic material ease trigger and edit collider tool that's it guys for this video tutorial I hope you have enjoyed if you like this video hit the like button and share with your friends so that everyone will get benefited in the upcoming video tutorials we are going to discuss more about physics system in unity for more benefits and be up to date, do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Keep learning, keep gaming, keep sharing. Thank you guys, thank you very much. See you in the next tutorial.